Virgo Sun and Rising, welcome to your April 2023 Astro Update. It's Raina here. So in April, we have two concentrations of energy in the signs of Aries and Taurus. No surprise, because these are the two uh, signs that the sun will be in during some part of the month. But in addition to personal planets, uh, in these signs, in the case of Aries, there's also Chiron and Jupiter. And in Taurus, there is Uranus. And in May, there will be Jupiter there. So that's pretty significant. How, you know, what houses are these for you? Well, we're talking about um, with Taurus being a fellow Earth sign. This is the ninth house, and um, Aries is the eighth. So the eighth and ninth houses have something in common. They have uh, a connection to spiritual matters. How I characterize or differentiate the two houses, the eighth house to me is metaphysical, spiritual, magical. This is Scorpio's domain. So it's more open-ended, you could say. It's more about um, supernatural kinds of things. Uh, when we're talking about the occult practices, the tarot and astrology <laughs> uh, fit into the, this category. I, I think about this um, book fair that I would go to every year at my local library, it, it, not library, um, high school that I, I grew up in, they'd have a book fair every summer. And they would always put the astrology books in the horror section. <laughs> and so when I think of the word occult, I always think, oh my God, that sounds like, you know, satanic, right? Or something scary, dangerous. But um, it just means hidden. It's kind of like these... Um, teachings that are not really out in the open. Of course, that's ridiculous because it's so mainstream. It's not even funny these days. I, I hear young people. I was walking down the street and I heard these kids and they were probably like 12 years old. And he goes, yeah, I'm a Sagittarius or whatever. And the other kid was saying that. And young people, they know these things more than um, they did when I was that age. So I, I think that it's pretty mainstream these days, but you know, old habits die hard, right? So it's still considered eighth house and metaphysics, magic, shamanism, transformation. The eighth house is about transformation. Ninth house to me is more like organized religion, you know, the dogma, the, you know, the do's and don'ts, the the different philosophies of the religions, which is very interesting. You know, if you study world religion, even if you're not doing it because you want to join one of the religions, it still is interesting on a certain level just to see what everybody believes in. Um, so those two houses are, are going to be activated or, you know, there's going to be a lot of energy there. So the sun is, let's talk about um, the eighth house. We have the sun in, in Aries. We have Mercury in Aries. Just, I'm talking about an April Fool's Day as the month begins. Chiron is in Aries and Jupiter is in Aries. So um, there's a lot of focus on this house. It's also the house of other people's money. And Jupiter is a planet that can really be about money. So some of you, uh, because there is going to be a solar eclipse here, this could be a very important month for getting money, but it isn't necessarily coming from you earning it. This could either be like an inheritance it could be um, some kind of like, I, I honestly believe that dividends and those kinds of things that they could be eighth house because 
um, you know, the fifth house is a house of speculation, including gambling, and I'm sure stocks, the stock market might be connected to that, but I could definitely see the eighth house being connected as a stock market too, and dividends and that sort of thing. So, uh, you know, an example of that would be like with the solar eclipse, if a company suddenly split, uh, and you got like double shares or something and it's just like, wow, you know, but anyway, um, you have, you have this, um, energy with, um, mercury there that could be like studying something of a metaphysical nature. Um, and, and even Jupiter, um, is the same because Jupiter rules the ninth, which can be higher learning and, and teaching. So with the eighth house, it could be those magical teachings, shamanism and, and so on and so forth. So, um, on the third of the month, Mercury goes into the ninth house where Uranus is at. And this is the, you know, this is Sag's domain. In addition to being about religion, it's also about long distance travel. It's also about higher learning. So Mercury obviously is mental. The ninth house is a mental house. So this could be something that uh, is connected to like, you're going to travel, but it has some kind of a learning attached to it or teaching or teaching. Um, you know, Mercury is, you know, fast moving planet. So to say you're going to study abroad and all of that, it, that's, that might be true, uh, because Jupiter will be there starting, uh, May 17th. So, you know, maybe it's like a summer immersion program with, um, learning a language or something along those lines, but in whatever it is, um, this is happening. And on the sixth of the month, there's a full moon at 16 degrees of Libra. So for Virgo people, this is your second house of earned income. So cha-ching, that could be like increasing your money situation in some way. Um, full moons can bring things to kind of that fru fruition, which can be very um, maybe lucrative for you in some way. So fi financial gain. Um this could be for some people, this may be ending a job or a source of income. That's always a possibility. You may be learning something about your finances, you know, finding out something about them that was hidden and is now like you're aware of on the 11th Venus goes into Gemini. This is a fellow mutable sign. This is actually uh, your 10th house of career. And so that is another thing. Venus is the ruler of the second house. So that can also be indicative of financial gain through your work. And, or, you know, just in general financial gain, I would say. So you may find that it's increasing for you at this time, uh, also this can be very harmonious for career matters in general. If you're dealing with people in positions of authority, which the 10th house can represent, they can be very cooperative with you. They can want to help you because you are coming across in a charming manner. This is your reputation so it can be golden right now and and you know this is this can be like how other people are seeing you and you have some kind of charisma or something on the 19th or the 20th depending on where you live there's a solar eclipse at 29 degrees of Aries this is I've already you know talked about this this is going to be that eighth house. Um, 
this could be, you know, this is like a new moon on steroids. So it has the potential also for a long-term uh, benefit because it is more powerful than a regular new moon. It has more of a uh, extended influence. So, and even before this actual date, don't really focus too much on that date. That's the official date of the eclipse, but the date that it could actually affect you might be um, happening, you know, month, a few months later, even in March, for some of you, this could be affecting you. So just keep that in mind. I mean, there's really nothing to do except to accept what comes your way. Um, what I mean by that, accept the changes that come your way. I don't mean to be complacent and not to do anything, but sometimes people get freaked out if something um, leaves their life or comes into their life that they were not expecting. The more that we are doing things that are um, in alignment with what, you know, is meant for us at a higher level, which these eclipses are really about destiny. And um, we can also look at it as our free will because we may have actually um, planned out certain faded events in our life before we came here. And they, because we have amnesia, they may appear to be random. They're just these things that are happening, but we actually might have planned for them. So um, because this is happening in your eighth house, um, this can be like, you know, even like on the level of if you meet some kind of, uh, I wouldn't, I would say the ninth house is more of a guru, but this is kind of like on the cusp of the ninth house. So it could be, I would, I could see it being some kind of spiritual teacher, but more of the shamanic variety. If you meet somebody like that and maybe, or you get invited to go to some kind of shamanic journeying workshop and you're kind of like holding back, you don't know if that's something you want to do, go for it. Even if it's something that is out of your comfort zone or maybe you're not interested in it, think about what I'm saying here and you might find that it is part of the grand scheme of things for you to do this and be exposed to this. So that's, it could be as simple as that. Um, I also think that some Virgo people may have some kind of epiphany where you kind of connect the dots about the, some, this is the house of the shadow, um, the eighth house. Virgo is an earth sign and it's very kind of like analytical. I said kind of, like totally analytical. Ugh, analytical. I have the moon in Virgo. So even like for that, from that intuitive standpoint with the moon representing your intuition, I tend to be very analytical. And I see how that blocks your actual intuitive gifts because you're just kind of like uh rejecting something out of hand that comes into your mind because you you know you don't know where that's coming from so you're just kind of like oh well whatever and you just treat everything as random and and when something does have some when, when you are exposed to something um, spiritual you may analyze it to death instead of like just kind of absorbing it. Um, I remember being um, at like some kind of workshop or something and the lecturer like forbade people from actually taking notes, which I was like, thank the good Lord. Because I notice people, it really irritates me when people take notes you know, during spiritual things, because I really feel like they're, they're trying to activate their mind. They're, they want the, to, to, to give their mind something to play with. 
um, you know, absorbing things rather than trying to archive them to me is so important, especially when you have that analytical bent to your nature. Um, so anyway, that is happening and, um, right a few hours after that eclipse, the sun goes into Taurus because the eclipse is actually at 29 degrees, 50 minutes of Aries. So it's very close to that Taurus cusp. And so there you have that trine, you know, that ninth house. It's a very positive, um, place to have transits as well. So now your mind, now your, um, focus is on ninth house matters, including, uh, positivity and even travel could be in the picture. Since Uranus is in this ninth house, this could be something that happens spur of the moment where you just all of a sudden either get the urge or get the opportunity to travel. Um, and, um, on the 21st, we have a Mercury retrograde at 15 degrees of Taurus. So for those people who actually have had plans to travel, you may find that you have to update your passport or something, or there is some, some other snafu that you have to take care of that is connected to that. Also any kind of university deals or, you know, kind of like if you're studying yoga teacher training and you have to do something about that as well, that might be happening. Uh, but it's a very, you know, fast moving transit. So it's no biggie. It's going to be resolved, uh, by sometime in May. And, um, Mars is in cancer all month long. So Mars is, Mars has been in Gemini for so much time. Um, so that was actually in your 10th house, um, Virgo. And that, as I record this, Mars is still in Gemini. And so if you're listening before Mar March 25th, Mars is still in that 10th house. And then it goes into, and it's been there for seven months. It's going into cancer finally. So then that's going to be your 11th house and you're going, you know, maybe you have been very ambitious career wise and whether or not it has been, uh, easy going or not, who knows, because Mars can sometimes, you know, be, you know, where there's conflict, but now in the 11th house, you might be going after personal, um, long range goals that maybe have absolutely nothing to do with career. And that again, you know, with ninth house placements there, um, travel, maybe, maybe you even want to move to a foreign country or at least live their work there from a, from a different country. Uh, in May, when Jupiter goes into that ninth house, the house that it rules, uh, in Taurus, I think that that is going to be even more, um, possible for you. So that might be some of the things that are going on. Um, Mars in the 11th house can be having conflicts with friends, or maybe you're just involved doing more social things. I even think like for work related matters, you may be doing a lot of social networking. So there might be whatever your particular job is where that is uh, appropriate for you. You might be doing that. So that's what I have for you. Uh, Tor uh, I was going to say Taurus Virgo. I hope that this resonated. If you would like a personal reading with me, I have um, some specials, which are double readings. One is with the tarot called the whole enchilada. And one is like a double astrology reading, an hour of natal chart interpretation, an hour of transits uh, that are like for the next 12 months for a special price. And the same with the, the tarot is like, you know, a full length tarot reading and 
a natal chart interpretation for a special price. And then I have standalone readings for those types of readings, as well as, uh, you know, love readings, um, life path readings, that kind of thing. So you can find out more information at the link below. Thank you for uh, listening. Take care.